track of him. What's up? It's busted Walker again. White. <laughs> now, who's that kid, though? You put around the big gear, yeah. and then that's all there is to it. Okay. Definitely not Walter White. Oh, dude, do not start that car. Do not start that car. Oh, boy. Oh. Oh. Uh, That's listen, could you let one. Mr. Eglin know I'm going to be late this morning? Uh, I might miss the staff meeting. No, no, car trouble is probably just a dead battery. What is he looking for? Oh. Mike stole his badge. Is that it? Can you believe this? Well, that was boring. Um, ah. Okay, so I just got finished with uh, the premiere episode of Better Call Saul. Apparently... Nothing much happened. Uh, <laughs> that scene I just watched. That scene with the uh, the guy outside his house talking to his kid. Oh. It's a good reminder this is not Breaking Bad. Because if had this been Breaking Bad, that car would have exploded. And that would have been a DEA agent, not some guy, some accountant or whatever working at Madrigal, which is the company that um, is laundering money for both Gus Spring and Mike um, Erman Tront. Um, so I'm just I'm still processing this episode because basically all you you had three character arcs. You had um, Jimmy who's you know kind of mourning chuck and thinking it's it's his fault that chuck committed suicide he knows he committed suicide because um he notices that there are all these electrical devices in chuck's backyard because chuck is a uh, has this mental illness where he thinks anything with an electrical charge anything in the electromagnetic spectrum makes him sick so Apparently, you know, it's obvious to Jimmy that he had a relapse. So that's where we are. Well, actually, the episode starts with a flash forward. If you remember from last season, Jimmy, um, you know, is somewhere in Omaha, Nebraska, and he's working at a Cinnabon at a mall. And his name is Gene, and he's like hiding because he's uh, this is after the events of Breaking Bad, because the, you know the cops are looking for him. But anyway, he's hiding, and he and he like faints at Cinnabon. Um, so this episode starts where that one ended last season. Now, I think it was like the sixth episode or so. Did they even um, had that flat last flash forward? So you could almost be forgiven for for just forgetting what happened. Um, but anyway, it picks up where 
that last flash forward in last season left off where he passed out in the Cinnabon. They take him to the hospital. He's concerned now because, you know, he's no one knows who, who he is. He has fake identity, a fake license, social security number. So you have all these tense moments when the nurse is asking him for his information and he's kind of hesitant to give it to her. And you think he might, he's about to get found out. Kicking his back. But he gets in a taxi and, a t and a, he's driving away and the taxi driver is looking at him in the rear view. Taxi driver has a freshener, air freshener hanging from his rear view mirror that says Albuquerque. So, and the guy's looking at him but like he noticed, because, you know, uh, Jim is from, Jimmy got in all his Breaking Bad trouble in Albuquerque. So the guy looks like he might recognize Jimmy, and Jimmy has him drop him off. So, you know, before he gets home, I guess so this guy can, uh, can identify him but uh, and tell the authorities where he is. So that was the most tense part of this, <laughs> this episode. Because like I said, the arc, Pretty much the arc of Jimmy in this episode is figuring out what happened to Chuck, feeling bad about what happened to Chuck, and then later you see in the episode, he kind of comes to the conclusion that maybe Chuck didn't commit suicide because of him necessarily. Then you have Mike. From what we know from last season, Mike has, um, you know, he robbed one of uh, Hector's... Uh, money shipments. And I forget how much it was. It was a lot of money, but uh, it's enough money he could retire for a while. Um, and you know he gets connected with Gus Fring, and Gus sets it up so Lydia is laundering his this money that he got from the heist into the company. So he can pretty much they they. They send him the money back in the form of payments for security consulting. So you see him quitting his job, going home, and he uh, he finds one of these checks from Magrodrill, and it's for like ten thousand dollars. So they're just going to send him. They're going to wash his money basically and send it back to him in the form of these payments every month. Ten thousand. You can live on live on that easily. So anyway, he's just sitting there, and you know, Mike. Mike is a doer. Mike is not some guy who's content on just living comfortably and not having anything to do. So he <laughs> he sits in his afternoon and looks. His, his house for about an afternoon and he's out of there, which is when he steals this guy's ID. But uh, I thought, like I said, I, I mentioned in our last episode on Kurt and Paul Discuss, um, I like the Mike stuff because it reminds me of Breaking Bad, the stuff he does, the stuff he does in the underworld, tracking people, you know, throwing heists together. Um, just everything he does reminds me of, of Breaking Bad. The Jimmy McGill stuff is is interesting. It it reminds me a little bit of Breaking Bad, but he really hasn't transitioned to Saul Goodman yet. So it's still really like a episode of when you're watching Jimmy McGill exclusively. It's like watching L.A. Law or something. Some kind of boring you know lawyer show suits or whatever so i don't know i just like the mic stuff and then you got another character they follow in this episode nacho who had a hand in um he had a hand in in causing hector's stroke now his big dilemma is getting rid of the evidence because he traded out the his pill bottle, the whatever medicine that Hector takes for his his heart condition or whatever. So you watch him trying to get rid of that while Gus is looking on. That doesn't work. 
they go meet Juan Bosa and Juan Bosa doesn't know who he is because he works exclusively for Hector and the Salamancas. So, but you see that uh, Gus knows what's going on because he's having Nacho followed. So, and of course, you know from Breaking Bad, Gus hates Hector's guts. So this is obviously going to end some kind of team up. Um, but since Nacho isn't in Breaking Bad, we got to assume it's not going to end well for him. But it's, it's, it's really, you know, well, it's not that interesting what's going on with Nacho. Um, they basically tell him, you know, look, just go go about doing what you were always doing. So he's not out of the game, so to speak. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see how that story develops, though, because there's going to be some violence. We know from the promos, there's going to be some violence this season. But overall, I uh, I kind of thought I, this episode was kind of boring. I, like I said, I like the mics of Mike goes to magical and he's he's running around his warehouse, pretty much analyzing their security structure, which is non-existent, and. It basically looks like this is going to segue into him becoming the private eye that he is in, in Breaking Bad. So uh, it's very obvious where all these storylines are going. So I didn't see anything that made me go, wow, didn't see that coming, none of that. It was a pretty good episode, but like I said, boring. Um I mean, it's not not bad, not a bad born, just born in that nobody died. But you know, it's all natural progression of of what we see of the characters, what we can expect from the characters, what they do later in the in the season may surprise us. Who knows? They've been pretty good. You know, every season has started off kind of slow. You know. So it's just not, like I said, if you're expecting Breaking Bad with this show, come to the wrong place. But that's all I pretty much have to say about that episode. Go watch it. Um, just to hit on some recent news. Um, as you can see on my computer here, Dave Bautista has uh, threatened to quit Gardens of the Galaxy 3. If James Gunn isn't reinstated now, if you know anything about the first movie, um, James Gunn was really instrumental in getting Batista uh, for this movie. Um, he pretty much b made Dave Batista as far as his movie career. Because you you see Dave Batista in all kind of he was kind all kind of things now that he's been in Guardians of the Galaxy. He was in that new uh, Blade Runner movie. Um, I just I can't think of any of the projects that he's he's he is in development for him. But oh, he was in that uh, James Bond film uh, Spectre. I mean, he's been in a bunch of stuff. That the exposure that movie gave him were, was great for his career, and it's all because of James Gunn. So he's threatening to leave if they don't use his screenplay. All of the cast of well, most of them, anyway, of Guardians of the Galaxy came out in support of James Gunn. They wrote a, a open letter asking for Disney to hire him back, and it doesn't look like it's going to happen. And they're probably already contractually obligated to be in the next film. So I doubt any of them are seriously going to leave without incurring some a lot of money penalties which I'm sure Disney will collect. My bigger question is, where else can Guardians of the Galaxy go after the Avengers? Because you had the first two movies and then you've had them really transition into that last Avengers Infinity War movie very seamlessly. I mean, to me, that felt like their third act. Um, so I don't see what new ground they would um, cover in the third movie. I know there was some talk about that Adam Warlock being in the new movie, and we saw his like cocoon in the in the last movie. 
So I, they were obviously going to explore that. Seeing that he was a character who, in the comic book, had something to do with the whole Infinity War thing. They're obviously not going to use them in Infinity War because it's probably not. It's probably too late for him to use them. Um, but uh, he was going to have some kind of role. So it would have been. It would have been interesting to see Adam Warlock come to screen. Um, well, I, I'm I'm talking about it like it's not going to happen. It's obviously going to happen. Uh, unless they decide just to, to do a, all the major people to do or just revolt. I mean, Gamora is probably dead. I don't know how dead. Um, so, although I think she was part of the protest, so she might be coming back. Who knows? I don't know. Um, they obviously couldn't do the, do the next movie without Chris Pratt. So, they really want to threaten this franchise. Chris Pratt would have to lead the way, so to speak. So that's that's what's happening in the Marvel Universe. Um, I just want to um, briefly touch on this Alex Jones thing. Now, Alex Jones, if you you might know him as uh, the guy behind Infowars, he has a big presence on YouTube. And it was interesting because as a YouTube channel guy, it was kind of interesting to see what happened to him. Um, Facebook, it already kind of banned a couple of his his Facebook pages, or I think it was like four pe- Facebook pages that he had um, for hate speech. But, and I heard that there was some talk about Spotify uh, banning some of his podcasts. This guy has all kind of. He's he's across all kind of media. He was on, he was on Facebook. He was on Spotify. He was on. He has a Apple in the App Store with Apple. He has podcasts with Apple, um, and he has a YouTube channel, of course. Uh, and I think he has a, a bunch of radio shows. So he's everywhere, but. The company that really got the ball rolling on on a lot of his bands. I mean, it was Facebook, but he really got deep platform after Apple canceled his podcast. So his YouTube channel, I hear, I haven't checked because uh, I'm not I'm not an Alex Jones fan. I'm not I'm not into that whole fake. He is fake news, but. Uh, He's been banned by everybody now. I mean, he still is going to obviously make money. Like I said, he has radio. But um, you you see a lot of these people uh, online complaining about censorship, which is why I wanted to talk about it. I don't know whether it was it's the it's the uh, state the state of our education system. But the fact that people are calling this censorship just is so hilarious to me because people do not understand what the First Amendment is about. I'm going to explain it one more time for those who don't know. The First Amendment was established so the government cannot infringe on your right to speak. Not a private corporation, not your boss at work. In fact... If you really think you have free speech in this country, everywhere, and you can say whatever you want. I mean, you can say whatever you want, but 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 that does not hinder you from the consequences of speech. It only protects you, like I said, from being jailed by the government. Okay, if you want want a demonstration of how that works, go to your boss tomorrow. And call them a big flat slob or curse them out or something like that. And see how long you keep your job. Okay. If you have free speech and it's okay to say whatever you want. Curse out your boss tomorrow and see how far that gets you. Or go harass a woman. Uh, I mean. Go go yell fire in a theater and see 
how long it takes you to get arrested. I mean, there are situations where free the sp- free speech ar- argument only gets you so far. And having free speech with a private corporation is is not one of those ways that it works. So just wanted to, that's just a pet peeve of mine. It's just, I, every time you have something like this happen, um, you know, you got people crying, censorship, censorship. It's not censorship. It's not censorship. And like I said, Alex Jones would be fine. But to me, Alex Jones is a terrorist. I mean, he's one of these people who's going running around saying Sandy Hook didn't happen. And his followers have harassed. I mean, you're talking about this family who lost a six-year-old having to move seven times because Alex Jones told his followers that they were actors and that the government is trying to take your uh, Second Amendment rights. So this is kind of stuff that, that Alex Jones engages in. If, if he was Arab and he said something like that, let, let's say an Arab guy got on YouTube and say, um, said that the Pulse nightclub shooter, who was an Arab, oh, that didn't happen. That was, that was fake. That's just to make Arabs look bad. How, how long do you think that, that guy would keep his channel on YouTube? People would probably call him a terrorist. So Alex Jones is a terrorist. Let's make no bones about it. I mean, he advocates for violence against um, Muslim groups and people he doesn't like. I mean, I think he was he might have even been part uh, part of that Pizza Gate thing. Probably not. I don't know. I think that was somebody else. But um, he's been part and parcel. And so many conspiracies, it's it's just it's nauseating that he has so many followers that they actually believe him. I mean, um, President Trump even ha- has praised him. But anyway, he, he you know, I think personally, I have no proof of this. This is just my opinion. I think uh, not too long ago he was. Uh, he made some crack at Obama. He, he said something on the show about Obama having sex with 10 dudes a day. And I just thought that was weird. I said, well, why, why go for the homosexual angle? And I think, and I think that happened very recently. So my thought on, on why he got banned so, so quickly from Apple is because of course, you know, Tim Cook, who's the CEO of Apple, is gay. So the fact that Alex Jones would 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 accuse President Obama of adultery, but he would go the gay angle. I mean, I, I don't see why he would say President Obama is sleeping with ten dudes a, ten dudes a day, unless he thought the homosexual angle was would make it even worse. If you know, you see what I'm saying? I mean. I mean He could have just said, well, President Obama is sleeping with 10 women a day. I mean, what would have been the difference? I mean, he's still committing adultery either way. So why go with the gay angle? And I think that angered Tim Cook, which is why, you know, when this when Facebook opened the door, Tim Cook just kicked it, kicked it open and said, you know, the hell with this guy. Let's let's just kick him off, you know. And, I mean, nobody it really feels sorry for Alex Jones except for his crazy followers. But that's just my opinion. That's what I think think happened. But it's not censorship. Although there are things he says uh, that I think are libelous or and or is that the right word or slander? Either or. But and some things that are the equivalent of yelling fire in the theater. So I do think he has done some things that border on, if not outright terrorism, are kind of on the edge of being terrorism. So that's just my opinion, though. But 
that's it for the binge list today. I don't think I got anything else I really want to comment that's happening. Um, if you got any ideas on what I should talk about, just hit me up on the comments. Um, I also would like some subscribers. I know this is a relatively young channel. I've only we've only done I think 17 videos, and we've only been out well for like three months. But uh, I really need some more subscribers watching. I would like to do this as a full-time job at some point, but it's not going to happen unless I get some followers or some subscribers. So anyway, if you haven't already subscribed, thank you. I'll see you in a couple days. I'll